Welcome back. It's Long and McQuaid's Riffs 101 with the great Sean Barone. Of course, as you know, Long and McQuaid is where the music begins. And the great Dean. And the what? And the great Dean. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Um, so I asked Sean a question uh, about songwriting. Would he write a different song if he was in Saskatoon as opposed to Toronto? And that kind of spurred a little thought. Yeah, that's an insightful question. And we've been getting... Um, Questions and requests. I should have on, said uh, Vancouver, sorry. Or, but, or Vancouver, yeah. <laughs> big city or small town or in a vehicle or not there. We forget how much our environment and the surroundings and the noises that we hear will make their way into the, the songs that we write and the records that we make. So we've been getting requests to uh, talk about songwriting, and that was a perfect question to lead into that. You can hear in, in recordings from... You know, the early 20th century when North America was becoming very industrial and there were things like trains going across the country would be the things that harmonica players would hear the whistle going and they'd go... And that cool. was to sound like a train whistle. That, that shuffle rhythm, that clickety-clack sound. That... Yeah. That's all the train. I made a, a record on a train called Two Steel Strings. It was on a vintage train going from Montreal to Vancouver. Right and the, on. the train was my rhythm section. So a lot of the songs had that kind of vibe. And you can hear in industrial music, in dance music, that that's more that was born of the sound of, of cities and trucks backing up with the you know with the or the sound that a fax machine makes, or the sound that that uh just modern life has. And I've I live downtown, so a lot of times I'll be working on a song, the windows will be open, and a truck will back up, and, uh, and a car will go by, or a siren will go by, and the notes of that siren will hit the chords that I'm playing along with in a way that they kind of go. It's like when you're driving and your windshield wipers are on, and people are walking in time to them for a little while, and then it goes off, and then it's yeah. not the same anymore. But for a second, those sounds go along with what you're doing. Then another uh, analogy could be like when you hear a, a record that someone's playing in another room and you don't hear it quite right. You don't hear it starting on the one. You hear it sort of differently and it sounds like a completely different song. And then your ear clues in and goes, oh, it was... I heard it starting on a different chord and then my ear snapped it into place. For songwriting, a lot of those things are really useful. I find I, I go out and I collect ideas by listening to people and I could be listening to the sound that someone's voice has when they're speaking and someone else starts talking and the way that those two things work together can really spur song ideas. But what about when you were back in the prairies? When I was back on the prairies I found and it sounds hokey to say this I found I was really creative around harvest time and I was I was writing a lot of songs um, that that evoked where I was. They had wide open spaces in them. They had, uh, the, you know, in the, in the winter, there's a real, the obviously harsh weather that, that you stay inside and you, you get real proficient on your instrument because you can't go outside. Um, so that would influence it. Whereas in Vancouver, you know, when it, it's been raining for about seven weeks in a row, <laughs> you tend to start writing a lot of minor chord songs. Um, so I think, Keep your ears open, not only for the music that you're going to write, but lyrical ideas can come from going out and just hearing snippets of things that people say. If you go to the casino, the cacophony of all those machines making those sounds all at the same time, that can be music. I think I said in an earlier lesson, anything you put a frame around is music or art if you decide that it is. So it's almost like that movie Dancer in the Dark where... The, the sound of a factory became music in Bjork's head, or the sound of a train became music. The sounds that are around us can be very musical, and you can use them to write songs. Like I said, the, the train sounds, the... of a truck backing up, uh, the, you know, the, the, uh, the motorcycle sound, or the car sound of the... Those are all raw materials. Those are Lego pieces you can use um, and, and put them into your creativity. And if I haven't stressed it enough, if you know one chord, you can write a song. That's cool. The great Sean Barreau with more great, insightful knowledge. Uh, this has been uh, Long and McQuaid's Riffs 101, Long and McQuaid, where the music begins. 
your new album, downloadable everywhere? Downloadable everywhere, everywhere you can go to hear music. The it's, uh, yeah, the latest record is called No Bad Days, um, and there's a ton of slide playing on it. The, uh, the, the iconic, the one and only Gordy Johnson is now our mm -hmm. full-time bass player, and he produced it plays bass on it. We did it at Willie Nelson's studio, and every band says this. You take it with a grain of salt for what it's worth, but I think it's the best thing we've ever done. Right mm -hmm. on. Sean Barreau, Wide Mouth Bass, and that's it for Riffs 101. For this time, we'll see you again.